Hi there, this is Ryan Schultz, and welcome to Metaverse Newscast. This is the show where we interview the people behind the social VR platforms, virtual worlds, and the metaverse. And my guests today are Methew and Bagnaria, and we're in their beautiful experience called Scurry Waters. It's good to have you both. Thank you. Well, my first question is for you, uh, Medhew, and I wanted to ask you, what brought you into virtual worlds in the first place, and what eventually brought you to Sansar? Uh, many, many years ago, I think 13 years ago in Second Life, uh, I mean, I just saw an interview with Philip uh, about Second Life and went in immediately. I mean, I've always been, I've always loved to create and uh been very creative in the arts uh but i never got into 3d until i found uh second life really oh really that's very Mm -hmm. interesting okay Mm -hmm. so i jumped right into animation that's uh been my world for 13 years and when did you when did you start with sansar oh oh probably a year and a half ago oh Um, wow okay so basically, you transferred over a lot of your knowledge about creating 3D content in Second Life over to Sansar. Right, right. And Sansar wasn't really, before that time, they didn't even really have any way to bring in animation. So uh, as soon as they were able to, though, um, that's all we've been doing ever since. Well, one of the things I really love about this experience is the amount of animated content that you've got in here. And I wanted to ask you, how do you create that content? Well, I you know, I learned Blender uh, probably five, six years ago. Okay. And that's been my tool of choice. I mean, I love Blender. Uh, you couldn't uh, rip it from my hands. So you use Blender to create the animations as well as the 3D mesh? Uh, most of the time. Um, a lot of times now, Bignari will make the mesh, and sometimes he's even animating, so... Well, how do you guys split the work between the two of you? Is one of you focused on one aspect more than the other? We overlap with almost everything. Uh, but, uh, like, I have more scripting abilities because I have a software engineering background. Oh, and I see. I have done way less animations than Matthew. I have, however, written, like, a software system for animation when I was uh, in my 20s. Okay. So, uh, so I am very familiar with it, especially from the coding angle. Uh, mm-hmm. And... Uh, Aside from animation, uh, like pretty much everything that's a little bit deeper coding, uh, like I write, but I pretty much just enhance the stack of uh, simple scripts uh, by just giving them extra features. And that enables Matthew to actually set things up. Like most things here are uh, basically uh, constructed uh, in some sort of Lego block, um, extended simple scripts. Okay. Bagneri, I wanted to ask you, how did you first get started in virtual worlds, and what brought you to Sansar? Um, well, I always had a love for 3D, and I had experimented about like um, 20 years ago with 3D Studio Max, and the first thing I actually did, uh, I animated, uh, uh, well, created a rig- and animated a teddy bear that was a dancing teddy bear. Uh, was this the I- second life? No, that was just like uh, like an animation that I uh, m- made into a movie, uh, and then oh, I see. Okay. Uh, then later on, I discovered uh, Second Life, and I truly do not remember how I discovered it. But I, what I uh, what I distinctly remember is uh, just how excited I was about it, and specifically uh, the ability to build with other people or in front of other people, and just like uh, the fact that you were able to uh, to create experiences that other people could enjoy with you. Because that's a challenge when you're uh, a creator, like uh, you are, uh, let's say, a painter or a sculptor. Um, but usually that object that you created, like even a photo, uh, like uh, leaves your house and then uh, you don't really uh, uh, engage with the people who are enjoying your art uh, while it's in uh, the virtual world. Um, uh, places like Second Life and Sansa or all the other worlds, uh, you are with that person enjoying your content. And that's very, mm-hmm. uh, very powerful. It's, uh, it's very, very attractive to me and I think uh, attracts a lot of creators. Yes, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. And how did you come to Sansar? Um, well, I, uh, as a Second Life user, I got an invitation to the beta uh, of Sansar. So uh, as soon as I got that, I checked it out. But like I felt uh, that was like uh, probably roughly two years ago when like they had the first call to uh, creators. So right. I checked it out, I walked around a little bit and thought, it's a little bit too early perhaps. Uh, and then 
a little bit longer than a year ago, I actually uh, went back and and uh, felt okay. Really, it's uh, time to to engage now because otherwise, I'm uh, I feel I'm missing the train. And oh, there's enough uh, working here that I can actually be creative and uh, and uh, go wild. And that's exactly what has happened in the last year. Well, you guys have made a beautiful experience here. I really like this. This is one of my favorite sounds our experiences. So what, tell me, what have some of the challenges been in, in creating this experience? Well, uh, Scary Wonders is unique in that it's wide open. You can see everything from everywhere. Nothing yeah. block, blocks anything else. So yes. ultimately, we had to be crazy efficient, you know, in every single way possible. Uh, recently, we just got draw calls, so we're able to add all this, um, all the plants and a lot more to the experience. But before that, we really had to pay attention to every aspect uh, that we controlled in Scurry Sc Water. Well, we explain just really briefly what draw calls are. Um, I can take that. Uh, like, uh, so it's draw distance, uh, and uh, that is an ability in each object you have in your scene uh, to set uh, the distance that it's being rendered at. So, for example, like if you have a small object, like a little rock uh, or a coconut, uh, that you know doesn't need to be visible from, like let's say, a hundred meters away, uh, you just set it to a hundred meters, and then uh, it will gently fade out at that distance. Um, mm -hmm. And that enables you to add like a, a ton more content in your scene because uh, the things that are small and don't need to be visible from a distance uh, are not uh, weighing the engine down. Oh, I see. Okay, so it it's, makes it easier for people to visit and travel your experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it uh, allows us to place like hundreds of additional objects, like like yeah. all the palm trees and the mountain ranges and yeah. all those it new plants I just made. Yeah, yeah you could not have real. placed them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'd love to to stretch uh, uh, like uh, the limits uh, as to what he can do in Sansa. And so um, when we made it initially, uh, like uh, we had seen like a, a music video in, uh, on a Sunday morning, uh, like uh, of a, a float in a, uh, in a ocean in Tahiti. And uh, we got inspired to, to create something that has the same feeling. So uh, Scurry Waters basically just started out with just being water and one of the floats that first day. And um, and because it's so vast, like uh, the ocean surface is about 600 by 600 meters, uh, which is uh, like way smaller than what you can do in Sansa. But uh, at the time, that was about the maximum that you could actually do something efficiently. And okay. so the challenge has always been to uh, to balance out like um, like not adding too much content. Uh, and we have always kind of reached that limit. Like we had phases where like when there were more than six avatars, everything would crash. Uh, but uh, it, it's uh, allowed uh, like Sansa and the engineering team at Sansa uh, to uh, to see problems they had not encountered before. And so we're really happy that they always addressed everything that we encountered. Well, boundary testing mm -hmm. is an important part of any virtual mm -hmm. world, and it's good that you guys are testing the boundaries. Mm -hmm. I want to ask about this whole scurries thing. Who came up mm -hmm. with the idea of scurries, and what are they? <laughs> well, I haven't met you answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we both, Bagnari and I, uh, when we first met, we neither of us were really creating. We were just playing and trying out things. Right. Um, and then they announced the maze contest. And, I remember uh, that, yeah. Right, right. And, you know, I asked her if she wanted to do it, because I knew that the maze would get into a lot of coding, and that wasn't something we played with yet, or Bignarin had played with yet. So uh, it was really her decision, and once she decided, oh, hey, let's, let's give this a shot, we had to decide on what, what, what the theme was. And uh, her and I together worked out back and forth what these scurries were going to be. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so it was basically our creation. Yeah, I, I just said, it needs to be cuter all the time. <laughs> Constantly. Well, I think they're really, really cute. I think they're wonderfully cute. Mm -hmm. What is the most fun that you've had working on building stuff in Sansar? I have you answered that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we, uh, when we get and we make a new experience, you know, the idea for coming up with Scurry Waters, the idea for coming up with uh, Scurry Landia, and now Scurry Canyon, and we have a new one coming out, uh, mm -hmm. 
just throwing ideas at each other, you know, bouncing things off of each other. Okay. Yeah. And keeping each other motivated too, because like, uh, I don't think you could do this uh, by yourself because over time you, uh, you just have to keep motivating yourself. And that's a lot harder than when you're a small team. And uh, also just mm. like uh, really nice to, um, to have a complementary skill uh, set, but also have overlap enough so that we can actually uh, give objects back and forth. Uh, like I'm usually doing more of the texture work, for example, uh, but like we're literally working on the same asset. Like we take the palm tree. Most uh, of the assets. Yeah, yeah, most of the assets are, are definitely created together. So like, uh, um, I mean, sometimes uh, Matthew does something by himself, like the parrot is all Matthew and I made uh, this uh, a set of new plans. Uh, but in general, like we are just giving it back and forth, like um, he models a gun, I texture it, uh, yeah. and it goes back and forth, uh, yeah, and, and it, it makes it fun because uh, right. it also um, pushes you creatively to do better than you would do just by yourself. The parrot in particular I love. Um, can you talk a little bit about what tools you used to create it and how long it took you to make that parrot? Was that in Blender too? Yes, it was entirely created in Blender. Even all the texture work and everything was all done in Blender. Okay. Or Photoshop, too. I mean. Oh, you use Photoshop as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But basically, the entire parrot, from the rig to the model to the texturing, all done mostly in Blender. It's wonderful work. So what features would you like to see on the Sansar platform over the next little while? Well, obviously, uh, like people are always asking for more interactivity, and uh, to us that means uh, when you look around, like we uh, are specialized in animation, right? Everything moves in uh, storyboard, is in all of our experiences. But what we are not able to do yet uh, is uh, to move uh, an object independently, so you uh, can currently not just take a scurry and have it follow you, for example. Okay. And that's one of the products we're planning on having, like uh, pets and uh, creatures like that. Okay. Uh, and the second big one is uh, being able to ride vehicles. And we're, we're pretty confident that both things are coming in the next half year, right. roughly. Put both of those together, you'll be riding horses and dragons. Mm -hmm. Cool. I would love to ride a dragon in Sansar. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. How do you respond to people who criticize Sansar because, as they say, there's nothing to do here? Well, I think uh, in some ways that's true. Uh, but that's not going to be true over time because it's just we have the tools now. Like Gnari and I, uh, you know, we built Scurry Waters and many other experiences that are all interactive. And it's just about everyone learning uh, what they what is possible. So I think it, just give it time and almost every experience will have interactivity. Yeah, when I started a year ago, uh, like it was basically like a big museum, but a very high quality museum at that already. Uh, and uh, we have been given way more interactive features now, like uh, recently, for example, uh, support for uh, simple scripts and guns. Uh, and those uh, are popping up everywhere over uh, uh, like uh, the Atlas. So you can actually find so much to do now. Uh, so I think um, maybe a year ago that argument was true, but if someone really looks around, um, and uh, and has their eyes open. I mean, just here in Scurry Waters, you have about 12 different activities. Like, uh, you can uh, battle pirate ships, you can throw knives at boards, you can uh, uh, shoot bubbles at each other and trap people in bubbles. Uh, there's literally uh, like 12 different uh, little games embedded in, in just this experience. And this is one of uh, three experiences we have, and they're all like that. Like, uh, Scurry Landia is more like an adventure game, um, and the Scurry Canyon is like a shoot range where you shoot like skeleton spurs but it's very interactive and um so uh, when you look around you will actually find so much to do already and uh if someone gives that argument they're typically not spending much time in sensor it's typically people who were on the shed um or like uh, who uh, who just uh, found a sensor through steam and then they're spending half an hour and uh, maybe they uh, start in the wrong experience that's just uh, a beautiful world, but there's nothing to do. And, and that uh, is really something that we try to uh, combat and, and giving people more to do. And like when someone tells us, hey, there's nothing to do, uh, we can give them like uh, 20 examples of things to do uh, that are really fun to do. So uh, it's a mute argument by now, in my humble opinion.
One of the things that I have noticed about Second Life and Sansar both is that they tend to attract an older crowd of users, especially when compared to places like Rec Room and VR Chat. What are your thoughts about that? I think uh, it's interesting that Ready Player One centers around that 80s crowd, you know, and the Second Life crowd is that 80s crowd, you know. Yes, uh, you're right. And it's very interesting that the, the same people that grew up with rotary phones are running around with headsets now. You know? uh, but I think it's great and especially good for both Second Life and Sansar because we have a, a more mature crowd that is probably going to get more into, uh, you know, creating things to do. I think you've got a good point there. Mm-hmm. So can you show me a little bit more about each of these spots on this map here? Sure, if I remember all of them. <laughs> so we are currently at uh, position four, which is the knife board. Uh, then um, in this position, number five, uh, you can ride on stingrays, uh, which will carry you from here to here, roughly. Okay. Then number, number three is uh, like a, a board with a mannequin where you can throw nice... Uh, um, into the board uh, that will stick, which is kind of fun. Number okay. six is like a cannon uh, um, test range. So you have like two cannons on this round platform there, and you can shoot uh, that cannon at a target uh, to to practice because uh, in this area, uh, you actually, actually over here, number two, um, you have what we call sink the ship, which is like these two pirate uh, ships battling each other, so you can have two groups of uh, people shooting uh, cannons uh, and have the other boat explode, uh, which is cool. a bit of a fun. Cool. Uh, number nine is a Pearl Quest. Uh, the Pearl Quest is actually um, like a prerequisite for, for one of our other experiences, where when you're fulfilling it, you get a weapons upgrade in the canyon. Uh, so you basically have to crack some shells open and deliver them to three different scurries. Uh, another really fun one is the speedboat ride. Um, in that one, you have to bribe a scurry um, with uh, a fish. He loves fish. Um, and then he gives you like a, a ram oh, ride a um, yes, uh, that does a round. And uh, it's really fun to do. <laughs> Number eight is um, a very simple uh, quest uh, where you have to find a starfish uh, and, uh, and deliver it to a scurry. And number seven is uh, taking a ride with a scurry on a on a raft um so some of them are simple some of them are pretty complex but they're all fun and once you complete them all we make sure you get some rewards for it as well great that's wonderful mm -hmm. so i've heard about this bubble game can you tell me a little bit more about that yeah, in actuality, there is one blank spot here, which will be a bubble uh, so that you can teleport uh, to our 10th quest, uh, the bubble game. And the bubble game is using uh, like uh, the sensor uh, gun uh, script um, and enhances it in a way where you actually shoot uh, bubbles at people to trap them in the bubble. And they will float up into the air for 10 seconds. And that is what counts as a hit. Uh, so it's super fun and people seem to enjoy that more than any anything we've created so far. Oh, well, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. All right. How do I you, see? You, you activated it just now. And like in five seconds, I'm going to able to bubble you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a trip and a half. <laughs> 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 In this experience, we made almost everything ourselves. So explain a little bit how this cannon works and how I'm supposed to aim it at this. I'm supposed to aim this at the pirate ship, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you, if you click the base, then that triggers the animation of the cannon to rock back and forth. Okay. And then you can try and time that rocking to hit one of the sails. <laughs> I didn't realize your own ship could get hit. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, there it is right there. That's yes! <laughs> oh, my God, this is so good preventing my frustrations. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> so we're in Scurry Canyon. Can you tell me a little bit about this experience, Bagneria? I sure can. So uh, about three months ago, uh, the lab released uh, support for guns and their scripting uh, stack. 
and we just wanted to create a fun experience around that that is not just like a, a target practice but really kind of kind of a fun gaming experience with a scoreboard uh, so that people can compete and uh, like actually blow things up and uh, let uh, steam a little bit and uh, we ended up with scary canyon can i give it a try absolutely you can Geronimo! <laughs> well, I'd like to thank both of you for giving me the tour of Scurry Waters and Scurry Canyon. I've really enjoyed this. And as always, I'm Ryan Schultz, and this is Metaverse Newscast. Bagneria, why do you like Sansar? Uh... Of all the worlds I have uh, been visiting, I think Sansa shows the greatest potential. Like, uh, we have stunning visuals, uh, like it's uh, just at the beginning, but like the beginnings are really showing uh, the potential for the future. And I think the uh, biggest piece of the puzzle is that uh, they provide uh, really good uh, support uh, to script items here. And we only now start seeing people really uh, take advantage of all the different things they can already do. And I think uh, Sansar versus Other Worlds is a world for creators. How, if you were, uh, if people from Second Life were watching this, what would you tell them to get them to try this out, if possible? Well, one point uh, or one great uh, aspect of Sansar is that worlds are basically free. You get to uh, have up to 20 experiences uh, that are vast. They're 4,000 by 4,000 meters. And that is uh, like uh, 64 times bigger than like a, a single second life uh, sim. 64 times because like a, a second life sim is 256 meters, which fits eight times into uh, 4,000, and uh, that is like a whole uh, area that you can uh, do 20 times over. And anyone who's interested in creating vast worlds uh, will find it very rewarding. And Medhu, what would you tell Second Life people wanting to try out Sansar? I would say that uh, it's uh, vastly more efficient, uh, vastly better... Uh, frame rates, and the visuals. I think a lot of people in Second Life love the visuals. Well, in Sansar, it's even better. So what experiences do you have that you guys are working on for the future? What's in the pipeline for people? We have many uh, ideas for experiences, but the next one that we have uh, is uh, originally we thought up uh, many months ago called Finding Melda. But this one's going to be completely different, just like all of our experiences are different. This one's going to be completely different in that it's going to be more of a puzzle or mystery-solving type of game. Finding Nelda is basically our attempt uh, to an escape room type of game where you have to solve puzzles to advance from level to level. So it's going to be super much fun, but it's also like one of our more elaborate uh, experiences. So it will take us a while to put together, but I think it's going to be worth it. And uh, that's what uh, we're about. Like we always uh, try to push the bar, uh, like not uh, repeating ourselves too much and uh, mixing it up. And uh, it will be really fun. How do you guys feel about the future of Sansar? Well, I'm very optimistic because uh, we have stunning visuals. Uh, like we uh, become more and more interactive. And if you really uh, have a close eye at Sansar, you know uh, just how much potential it does have. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the future's bright. Uh, I think uh, there's lots of different things that you can do. Uh, the average person that comes in here can still, even though it's technical, can still use Santa.